Those who are standing, you are 
invited to be seated at this time. We gather in the house of the Lord, giving thanks to his most faithful, dedicated, and a loyal servant of Jesus Christ. Ermin Gale, a most beautiful soul and member of this local congregation for a number of years, is now at peace and rests with her Redeemer. I join with the congregation, the ministers on the form, and those online in extending our deepest condolences to the Gale and extended family on the passing of one so precious and loved. The service will be officiated today by myself, the Reverend Hermeline James, and the Reverend Dr. Leon Hales, and representing the local church is in the person of Reverend Marvely McLean, as the Bishop of the House is on sabbatical and is therefore not with us. Can I thank everyone who is present for making the effort to be here to support the family today? And can I thank those online who have joined the service as you're unable to be physically present, we appreciate so much that you are counted as being here with us. The service has been put together in consultation with the family, and it reflects the way that they would like us to celebrate Mother Gail's life. Can I ask those who are blessed with the opportunity to make a contribution in the um, service that you remain brief. I believe you have been guided on this already so that we are able to leave here no later than about 1.15 so we can make a timely journey to lay her to rest at her final resting place. Above all, may God be praised. May God be honored in his house. And we thank God for his faithfulness to his daughter. Can I now invite you to be upstanding for the singing of the first congregational hymn, Blessed Assurance. Followed immediately after the congregational hymn will be the opening prayer that will be offered by Minister Philip Reed, nephew. And after that, we will then have the first scripture reading from Psalms 27, verses 1 through to 5, and that will be read by Jennifer Beckford, cousin. I'm sorry for those who have that in front of you and you're wondering why I'm reading it. I'm doing it for the benefit of those online, so they will feel very much an integral part of what's happening in the service today. Thank you. Please be upstanding if you're able to do so. Just descending. 
Good morning. Open in prayer for Auntie Herman Gale. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come before you today with heavy hearts, we want to thank you for the life of Auntie Herman. We want to thank you for your grace and mercy in which you have shown towards the Gale family during this very difficult time. For you said in Psalms 18, verse 6, In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him even into his ears. Family and friends, God's ears are open unto your cries. And as we prepare ourselves to lay Auntie Herman into the earth, we know that it's only her body that is going into the ground. For on Saturday, February 18, 2023, God had called her spirit home. And she's now walking the streets of pure gold. And she's enjoying herself with her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For in John 14, verse 1 to 3, Jesus said, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Family and friends, rest assured that Auntie Herman's spirit is in the mansion of God's house. And for us who are left behind, her passing doesn't mean that she's gone from our lives forever. For her spirit is alive and well, and if we will humble ourselves and seek God's face during this difficult time, his promise towards us will give us the faith to read John 11, verse 25 and 26, and claim it for ourselves. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believe it thou this. Do you believe this? Then let us pray that as we say goodbye to our mother, our grandmother, our great-grandmother, our sister, our aunt, our cousin, our friend, and my Uncle Claudie's wife, that God's words will bring us comfort because Auntie Herman's spirit liveth with the one who gave her life on Tuesday, August the 4th, 1936. Father God, I pray that you will dispatch the angels of heaven like you did for Jesus in Luke 22, verse 43, and there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him to come down and strengthen us. I pray that you will wipe away all tears from our eyes. I pray that as the day draws to a close, you'll draw us closer to you. And that as the days, weeks, and months, and years passes by, you remind us that we, you remind us of what you said in Luke 20, 28. For he said, for he is not a God of the dead, but of the living, for all live unto him. I ask you now, Jesus, to take full control of today's service, and I ask that you will bless us with your peace and understanding. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. reading is from Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evil men advance against me to devour my flesh, when my enemies and my foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then will I be confident. One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his tabernacle and set me high upon a rock. I chose to say this psalm because when I was visiting Auntie not many days before she left us and I was reading this to her, she responded um, as if to say amen, even though she wasn't able to physically say it. 
and I just want to, to say that um, will always be in my heart, fond memories. I remember the times when we were growing up in each and, of, each and everyone's house and how she will so fondly be in my heart. She was the one that brought me and my brother to this country almost 59 years ago, and so I cannot forget her. Wonderful. We give thanks to God for those who have made their contributions. Minister Philip, thank you for your prayer. And um, Jennifer, thanks for sharing the reading of that Psalms. We're going to now go into a period of tributes. And these are in, in kind of slots. There's Friends Video Tribute. And the two individuals you'll be listening to will be Bishop Deverton Douglas, followed by Sister Joyce Small. Then I'll come back to announce the following. Thank you. Greetings to Bishop Dr. Webley, Reverend Hermelin James, Reverend Marvelly McLean, and this fine congregation that I've come today to celebrate the life of Mother Hermin Gale. I esteem highly this morning her family, and on behalf of my wife and myself, I offer sincere condolence. I came to know this wonderful lady in 2015, very shortly after I arrived at Handsworth. We hit it off straight away when I realized that she shared her first name with my late mother. This lady is small in stature, but unmissable when she is in the house. It did not take long to realize that she commanded the highest respect from those who knew her. It was Sister Sonia King who later on uh, filled me in as to her repertoire regarding her work in the community and in particular the George Street Community Nursery. In fact, she was a foundation member of the workforce there. This fine Christian woman, another of our Windrush stalwarts, is celebrated today as someone who did all that she could for God when she could. She was not just a classy woman, but a faithful wife and mother one who demonstrated love and the highest spiritual example in her household, not the least to her husband. She brings into sharp focus the scripture in 1 Corinthians 7 and 14 where Paul says that the unsaved husband is sanctified by the saved wife. She was an evangelist within the union. She brought him to church regularly. He was not saved, but she prayed for his, const his salvation constantly. And four years ago, God answered her prayers. Today, Brother Claudius is saved, baptized, and a full-fledged member of the body of Christ and the church of God. In terms of pastoring, Mother Gail was a delightful member of the congregation. And as Mother Gail left on our lips the words of Paul, 2 Timothy 4 and 7. I have fought a good fight. I have finished the race and I have remained faithful. With conviction today, we say that Mother Gail is certainly in the presence of God and a crown of life awaits her. We will miss her, but thanks be to God for the blessed hope that we have. I want to say a personal thank you on behalf of the family for the great care that you took of mom constantly until the end and especially for reaching out to me so that I could be there to share in some of the last moments of her life. Well done and God bless you. Thank you. sincere condolence from our family to the Gales family. I feel very honored to be asked to pay a tribute to
to my dear friend, Sister Herman Gale. Today is a very sad day for me because I'm not able to attend ongoing service of my dear friend. Over the years, Sister Gail and myself have become very good friends. She was kind, gentle, strong in her Christian faith, and loved the Word of God. I remember Sister Gail asking me how she could purchase a study Bible. She was a gentle giant. Every Christmas, my Christmas present from Sister Gail would be a bottle of perfume. A few weeks ago, Marcia gave me a bottle of perfume which Sister Gail purchased last Christmas. Even though she was very quiet and unassuming, but she was a wise lady. I will cherish those wise advice Sister Gail gave me. Every year, Sister Gail, Mom and myself we travel to the National Convention and the Ladies' Empowerment Conferences. On our way, we would be engaged in conversations and just having a time of fellowship. Sister Gail always looked forward, going to the big bookstore, buying books to enhance her spiritual life. When Brother Gail became a Christian, we rejoiced together. I believe this was one of the happiest days of her life. She prayed fervently for this to happen, and it certainly did. During the lockdown, brother and sister Gail was on my delivery list for delivery of meals from church. This was my weekly visit to the Gales, a visit I always look forward to. Although I was not able to go into the house, we would meet on the porch, greet each other, and have a little chat. I will truly miss my friend. I know one day we will meet again on the other side of heaven. Sister Herman Gale, my beloved friend, may you rest in peace. We give thanks for those contributors. We're now going to come in house and we're going to listen to two tributes entitled friends we have with us who i would call the mother of this house and that is no other than sister dorcas denton thompson who will be coming to share her tribute for her friend followed immediately after by sister cynthia spence like always can you put your hands together as she will be represented by her daughter as we put our hands together warmly for sandy at this time Good morning to everyone and first and foremost condolences to the family. Um, Mom was a very dear friend of Herman and sister Herman Gale, a very dear friend of Mom and for that reason it would be very difficult for Mom to do her tribute so I'm going to read it on her behalf. Precious and of great consequence in the sight of the Lord is the death of his godly ones so he watches over them. Psalms 116 verse 15. So it is with mixed feelings that I give this tribute on behalf of a dear friend and former workmate, Herman Gale. We were close ever since we met each other at George Street Community Playgroup, started by the late Esme Lancaster. After Esme Lancaster's tenure, Herman was in post with the increasing amount of under fives needing places. The playgroup developed into the George Street Community Day Centre with the support of Birmingham Social Services. Herman and I both received a salary and in time other staff were also employed. Herman successfully completed a training course for the under fives. Three of Herman's grandchildren, Adam, Rhys and Charlotte, along with many other graduates, were graduated from the nursery. The children's graduation to school was always a unique occasion, but that one was an especially proud moment for Herman. I hold special memories of Herman and Brother Gail and also my late husband spending time together at our home. I visited Herman in her home in March 2022. I saw her for the last time in hospital last month. She was sadly unable to attend my 90th birthday celebration last year. But unexpectedly, I received a telephone call from her daughter Marcia in December of last year saying her mother wanted to speak to me. It was a gift to hear Herman say, 
as fondly called at the nursery, did you enjoy your birthday? Our time this side of eternity has now ended. Hermin will now rest in peace and rise in glory. God bless you. Good afternoon to everyone. May I, on behalf of my family, the Spences, the Women of Destiny Discipleship Ministries, and New Testament Church of God, Hansworth, offer our sincere and deepest condolences on the, to the Gales and their extended family. We stand with you and share with you your loss and grief at this sad time. Be assured that your wife, Brother Gale, mother, sister, aunt, and friend, grandmother, is at rest with her God. In his word, we are there, where there is comfort. Isaiah 41 tells us, or is exhausted not to be fearful. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. That's for you, family. Today, the days, weeks, months, and years ahead will prove difficult as you mourn your loss. But be assured that there is hope, that if you faint not, Put your trust and live for God. You will see Sister Hermin again. Sister Hermin was a lovely woman of God, quite in her demeanor. In this building, she sat towards the back middle aisle on the, we call this little Luzel side of the church. She was quietly spoken, and that reflected in her persona and communications. Always smartly dressed, and wow, those lovely hats. Sister Gail supported her church with her attendance, her tithes, offerings, and free will gifts. She participated in church activities, and indeed women's ministry, and other activities such as Sunday school. And in our old building, when in those days our Sunday school was indeed the nursery of the church, Sister Hermine, along with others, were the teachers and support staff for the nursery group, age two to four, based in the green room. The Bible tells us that if we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for, for the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or we die, we belong to God. And surely that's what Sister Hermine did. She lived for her God. So, family, know that our thoughts and prayers are with you. This sanctuary was Sister Gail's place of worship, place of thanksgiving, place of prayer and blessing. We will miss her for the contribution she's made to the building of, of God's kingdom. Finally, family, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. I pray that you'll be comforted today, knowing that she did what she could, when she could, and to the best of her ability. Good night, my sister. Sleep on. Take your rest. God bless you. Thank you both. Sister Thompson and Cynthia for your contribution. As, as um, Sandy read the contribution from Sister Thompson, it brought my mind way back and, and to think how many children exist in our wider community and world have been blessed by the hands of those who devoted their lives at an age when they wouldn't even understand what was being done with them who are now great representatives in different parts of our world and our communities because of the likes of people like yourself, Sir Thompson, 
and Mother Gail. I said to Reverend James, it brought my mind back. I remember when she retired out of that position, Mother Gail. And to hear that story today, it makes you realize your legacy, if you invest it in people, will live on even when you're not here. I think we just need to put our hands together for Mother Gail and honor her today. She deserves it. Thank you also, Sister Thompson. We're going to continue with two family tributes, Fredlin Golding niece and Warren Bryan brother. They're going to come and share their tributes, and immediately after them, we'll be having the second scripture reading, and that will be read by Lawrence Fuller, nephew. Show your love and appreciation to them as they come at this time. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm honoured to speak on behalf of my mother, Blossom, Bloss, Mrs. Bryan, sister-in-law to Mrs. Gale. My mother is truly distraught, saddened and devastated that she's unable to be here. She is currently in Jamaica. My dear sister-in-law, wife, mother, sister, aunt and dear friend to so many, my heart is truly broken. You were the personification of love, the heartbeat and the life of a dear husband and children a loyal friend held in high esteem and much loved. I will miss you so, so very much. Thanks for the gift of wonderful memories of time spent together, the many holidays traveling up the M1 from London to share quality family time together. Those were the days long before routine travel to far-flung exotic destinations or cruising in the Mediterranean or the Caribbean, but oh, the good times we had. As our family grew, we would travel to numerous weddings here in Birmingham, Lincoln and Derby and to London for my daughter's wedding. The pride of seeing our children achieve much educationally was and is immense. Proud moments with long lasting memories that death cannot steal. Pure joy. So you can shed tears because Mrs. Gale has gone or you can smile because she has lived. You can close your eyes and pray that she will come back or you can open your eyes and see all that she has left. Your heart can be empty because you can't see her, or you can be full of the love that you shared. You can turn your back on tomorrow or live for yesterday, or you could be happy for tomorrow because of yesterday. You can remember Mrs. Gale and only that she has gone, or you can cherish her memories and let them live on. You can cry and close your mind, be empty, be sad, and turn your back, or you would do what Mrs. Gale would have you do, smile, open your eyes, wipe away the tears, live, love, and go on. Dear Mrs. Gale, Hermin, Sister Gale, Herm, heaven has claimed you. Sleep on my beloved sister-in-law. May eternal light shine around you. Much love, rest in eternal peace. My sister went away when I was a little boy. <sighs> well, knowing my sister, when I was growing up, she, she's a dressmaker. I could buy something and bring it to my sister and say, I need a shirt. She said, get away from me. But as I turned my back, I had a shirt. I love my sister. I love her, I love my brother, and her, I love my sister. We grew up together. And as we grew up big, we went away. Each people goes differently. I never saw my sister when she leave until like maybe 10 years. But I'm a grown, grown big man. When she comes to the lives, I say, hi, my sister. She hugged me, she kissed me, she loved me. I don't know when I heard my sister sick. Before that, she called me and said, Lindsay, what's happened? 
Long time I don't hear from you. And we talk, Mr. Gale come and say, Brother Lindsay, we are having your voice here this day. Well, going and going, I hear my sister sick. My nephew, Lawrence, call me and say, Uncle, Auntie. I don't call her, I mean, I call her Monica. That's the way we grow up. Your, aunt, your sister sick, I say, you take so long to tell me. Claudette, I call them, I start to get, I say, oh, my sister sick, you don't make I know. Well, they say to me, say, well, Uncle, she's in the hospital. When Claudette called me, say, Uncle, I got to tell you this, my mom is in, I don't know, we call it a nursing home over in the state, but there's a hospital. hospital. Yeah. I say, oh, then she called me, say, well, they get a call, that all the siblings will come. I don't know, but I miss my sister, and I hope one day I will see my sister, not unhurt, but maybe someplace or we all have to go one day, and I miss you, my sister, and I have the love for you, and I was growing up until this day, you part away from us, but someday I will be seeing you. That's my few words. Shall we praise the Lord? Shall we praise the Lord in our time? I'm no stranger. I'm one of the local lads. I'm so glad to see each and every one this morning who comes to show their appreciation to my auntie. Um, give the Holy Spirit honor. I'm just going to read from Psalms 116, verse 15. Precious, is the, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. This psalm celebrate the deliverance from death. The singers knew that death is, is still a reality for every one of God's saints. When that day comes, God holds the death of his people as a precious thing. Rest in peace, Auntie. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you very much for those tributes and for the reading of the scripture. And we just want Warren to know as a brother, we feel your pain. We just want to commend you for the courage you really show to walk up here and to express yourself. Can we just show him some love right now? We just want him to know where we're standing with you and the family at this difficult time. We're going to have what's called um, overseas video tributes. Trifine, or Trifine, Brian Neese, nice, um, Vita Gale, Goddaughter, Pansy Gale for Moses, who is Moses, who is Bobby Gale, who is a brother-in-law. They will be uh, making their contributions on, on video, but immediately after that, the grandchildren some of them will come with their, chill, their tributes. Charlotte Bennett, granddaughter, Reese Bennett, grandson, Adam Bennett, grandson, and Devon Anderson, grandson. They will come after the video tributes to pay their tributes to their grandmother. Please receive the overseas video. Good day to everyone. It is a very sad time for us as we grieve the passing of our aunt. In sharing this small tribute, there are some adjectives I'd like to use to describe her. She was honest, smart, neat, kind, compassionate, loving, peaceful, and humble, just to name a few. Throughout my childhood years, she was my guardian angel, although I didn't know it at the time. The grave is certainly not our goal, because in Christ's own words, he said he has gone to prepare a place for all those who trust him here on earth. Aunt Ermin took hold of that promise when she surrendered her life to him. I know she will be greatly missed 
by our family and friends. Rest well, auntie, for tomorrow breaks a new morn. Good afternoon everyone. It is indeed a privilege and an honor to stand here on behalf of my family and I in Jamaica to pay tribute to our dear Auntie Ermin. We are blessed and honored as a family, although we are so many miles apart, to still be a part of this ongoing service for our dear Auntie. Auntie Ermin has I would call her, she's also my godmother, and I'm blessed to have her in my life. We have a close relationship, and for that, I am very grateful to be a part of her life. Yes, we as family, it is sad to lose our loved one to the grave, but we are, we are rejoicing this afternoon for for our life and for that reason we give thanks because the bible says blessed are the dead who die in the lord for they rest from their labor and their works follow on, on. surely our works follow on and we as family i just encourage us to be of good courage be strong know that if we live that life that God requires us to live, one of these sweet days we shall see her when the maids have rolled away. So I just encourage us to us be steadfast and movable. God bless you. Love you all. My name is Pansy Gale. This tribute is from my dad, Moses Gale, to his brother, Claudie, and family. My condolences to you, Brother Claudie, Angela, Claude, Marcia, and the grandkids on the passing of my dear sister-in-law. I know it's a very sad time for you, but remember, I am thinking about you and my prayers are with you. It was recently I lost my wife, as you know, so I know what you're going through. I know it's not an easy time, but I pray that God will comfort you all. As you continue to trust Him, He will help you through this. Auntie Herman was a wonderful sister-in-law, a very loving, warm, and caring person. We celebrate her life today as a gift from God and her memories will always be with us heaven has gained another angel take care brother Claudia and my family may her soul rest in eternal peace thank you everyone. <sighs> Dear friends and family, we are gathered here today to say goodbye to a wonderful woman who has touched our lives in so many ways. My dear Nan was not only a grandmother to me, but also a friend, a confidant, and a source of endless love and wisdom. Nan was a woman of strong faith who loved her family deeply and lived her life with purpose and dedication. Nan was always there for us, whether it was to offer a listening ear, a shoulder to cry on, or a warm hug to celebrate our accomplishments. Nan was a woman of great character and integrity. She taught us the importance of hard work, honesty, and perseverance. She showed us how to love unconditionally, forgive freely, and always put others first. Nan's kindness and generosity touched everyone she met and her legacy will live on through the countless lives she has touched. With that, I'm going to highlight some memories we have of our Nan, which show all sides of the woman we love dearly. 
Before church every Sunday, she would get us a pack of Starburst and cut it in half and save the other half for the next week. Even if we tried to convince her to give us the other half, she'd say, save it, if we were annoying her. If we were in the car, we weren't allowed to listen to any radio music as it was rubbish and too much noise. She would only let us have music on if it was the gospel tape. At the dinner table, we'd put salad, salad cream on our food. Almost every time, she'd turn her nose up and cuss us for ruining her dinner. <laughs> Nan loved flowers. A whole garden was covered in plants that she had grown. Charlotte remembers buying us some flower seeds one year, and every time she would go around, she would show her the progress. The boys of the family re remember the garden differently. It was a place to practice your free kicks. But beware, any wayward shot was followed by a scream of, watch me flowers. <laughs> Over the years, we'd anticipate this. After you'd kicked the ball horribly, if there was no call, then you were thankful that Nan hadn't seen you mash up her flowers. In the evening, we'd watch television with Nan. After dinner, we'd watch episodes of The Waltons and then ITV News. Then we'd watch the soaps, you know, Emmerdale, Coronation Street and EastEnders, and even reruns of Dallas. Nan would talk all over them if she couldn't believe the plot, gasping or shouting, out of order, if she did not agree with the actions of one of the cast. Every 27th of December, the whole family would get together for Christmas. Nan and Grandad would cook the most amazing food. Every year, we'd play games, but this one year in particular, it was karaoke. And I'll never forget the performance Nan and Grandad put on, both bellowing out the lyrics to Sam Cooke's What a Wonderful World. Charlotte remembers that when younger, after every dinner, she would do a singing and dancing performance for Nan and Grandad, and they would act like they enjoyed it every single time, showing encouragement and full support. Whenever we were down or ill, Nan never failed to send us a text message or to phone us. That right, that's right, Nan was tech savvy. In lockdown, when one of us had COVID, she would write us a long message saying how she hoped we'd get better and how Grandad and her will continue to pray for us. She then sent us a thread of pictures of her and Grandad and wrote, we send these pictures to cheer you up. Whenever any of us accomplished anything, we were always greeted with cheers and praise. She would always tell us how proud she was of us. She was truly kind and a loving person. As we say our final goodbyes to Nan, let us remember her for the love and gratitude for the many blessings she brought into our lives. Though we will miss her dearly, we can take comfort in knowing that she's now at peace, reunited with the loved ones who have gone before her. So let us say goodbye to our beloved Nan with love, respect and gratitude. Rest in peace, Nan, and know that you will forever be in our hearts and memories. Thank you. I don't think we're doing any justice to them grandchildren by that type of clap. Come on. They, they were excellent. If she could say thank you, she would be a proud grandmom saying thank you to you today. You've done her proud collectively, all of you. Well done. I'm going to ask us to change the scene. I'm going to bring the congregational hymn forward to now. So we can all open up our lungs and give thanks to God with the singing of the hymn, When We All Get to Heaven. And after the singing of the hymn, we'll return to the program as printed and we'll be listening to a solo tribute from Claude Gale, her daughter. And that will be entitled One Day at a Time. So if you're able to stand, please do so at this time as we are led by the worship team in the singing of the congregation.
I really didn't know what sort of tribute to do for my mother, um, but this sort of song came to mind. Uh, One day at a time, sweet Jesus. Mum used to sing it all the time. Washing, cooking, cleaning. It was her go-to song. So I just hope I do it okay for her. Show me the stairway that I have to climb. Lord, for my sake, teach me to take one day at a time. One day at a time, sweet Jesus, that's all. i 
strength to do every day what I have to do. Yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus. Tomorrow may never be mine. Help me today, show me the way one day. Do you remember when you walked amongst men? Well, Jesus, you know, if you look in below, that it's worse now than then. There's pushing and shoving. It's crowding my mind. So, Lord, for my sake, teach me to take one day at a time. One day at a time, sweet Jesus, that's all I'm asking of you. Give me the strength to do every day what I have to do. Yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus. Tomorrow may never be mine. Lord, help me today. Show me the way one day at a time. Lord, help me today. Show me the way one day at a time. We'll miss you, Mom. Hello, everyone. This is my menu for me. You are the matriarch of our family, and together with Dad, you ensured that her home was filled with love and happiness, a place that we always felt safe and loved. Mom, you are remembered for being that gentle and softly spoken person, never quick to anger or quick to punish. I recall you always calling to the Lord, mighty Redeemer, whenever we misbehaved, not that we misbehaved often, but never scolded us. You were a woman of God, true to your faith, and trusted the Lord at all times. You taught me some strong moral values that have guided me and sustained me throughout my life. Death has taken you from us, but know that we will never forget the love you had for all of us and the good times we shared. Winston and I will miss our many conversations at the dinner table, including when he tried to show you how to send WhatsApp messages. You are a fast learner and got the hang of it in no time. Everyone who knew you adored you, especially Dad. Me, Claude, and Marcia, your grandchildren, Reese, Adam, Devon, and Charlotte, and great-grandchildren, Aria and Carter, and your brother, Lindsay. Excuse me. Your many nieces and nephews, all of whom you leave behind to remember and grieve your passing. Our lives will never be the same without you, and we will continue to live and bring our children up with those same values that you instilled in us. You have done so much for so many and expected nothing in return because that is who you were. We were blessed to have you in our lives. Go in peace, Mom. I love you and we miss you. Good afternoon, church. This is a letter of love to my mom. Dearest mom, I feel so very special and fortunate to find myself so blessed with a mother as loving, caring, and as wonderful as you. You are such a beautiful, elegant, kind, humble, selfless, 
sweet natured lady. I could not have wished for a better mother. Thank you for always going the extra mile when I was a child in making my Christmas Day birthday exceptional and distinctive. You always made me feel extra special and ensured that my birthday was not ignored by making me a separate birthday cake from the Christmas cake mixture and also providing me with a massive birthday present, signifying the occasion and marking the fact that I was to be celebrated. I always joked with you, saying that just like baby Jesus, I was given to you as your very own Christmas present. Nothing was ever too much for you, as I recall you making alternative meals for me without complaint, as I detested and refused to eat rice, more especially rice and peas. Initially, you would painstakingly pick out all of the gunga peas from the rice in order to get me to eat it. And when that failed, you would cook me a separate meal of boiled dumpling, potatoes and planting on a daily basis, despite it being extra work for you. I have childhood nostalgic memories of us each Sunday returning from church, dad putting on the gram and you, and you, sorry. Sorry. Your nickname for me um, when I was younger was Fats. As let's just say, I was plump in comparison to Angela and Claude. I could have ended up with a complex, but I didn't mind and never took it personally, Mum, as I knew it was said with love as a term of endearment. As a child, I was often opinionated, forthright, and always stood my ground. Others regarded this as me being unruly, but you never did. Well, occasionally, you chastised me by saying, if you're cheeky, keep it to yourself. <laughs> but on the whole, you always had the patience of a saint with me. You encouraged my individuality, never stifled me, allowed me to be myself, would always have my back and defend me to others. Even though you, sh you are short in stature, you are the powerhouse of the family, but was never much of a disciplinarian. When we were fussing and getting on your nerves, you'd just give us the look, raise your eyes to the heavens and utter the words, God, give me the strength to endure into a house like this. <laughs> and we knew to stop immediately. Mum, you are an accomplished seamstress, have such a great eye for fashion, and always ensured that we were very well dressed and stylish for church. I do forgive you, however, for always dressing myself and Claude in exactly the same outfits, so that people would often mistake us for twins. Even though we disliked it, as we wanted our own separate identities, it must have been hard for you to resist, as we are only a year apart in age. Mum, you are a prayer warrior, which became even more apparent in recent times when you phoned each of us, each of our households during the COVID period and prayed for our safe health for about half an hour, after which we all felt truly blessed. Thank you so very much for the never ending support, kindness and love that you have imparted towards myself and my children over the many years. It has been invaluable and very much appreciated. You are not only a grandmother to Reese, Adam and Charlotte, but also a second mother to them. I know how proud you are of each and every one of them, of their education and all of their subsequent achievements. Mum, I attribute all of that to you, as none of it would have been possible were it not for you, nurturing and caring for them overnight whilst I was working late. You have instilled in them a good moral compass, which has enabled them to be the grounded young adults that they are today. In later years, uh, you became my confidant, my advisor, and my friend. You were always encouraging and uplifted me when I was, uh, I was experiencing challenging times. Even if I'd seen you during the day, we still found things to talk about, as you would phone me every evening for a catch-up. Mum, I miss your sweet, soft voice and cheery greeting of, all right, Mars. I miss you so dearly, but acknowledge that you will forever remain a beacon of guiding light within my life. I love you, Mum.
I know there was a bit of fear and trepidation, Claude, about singing, but you, you, you did it. You did it. Well done. Thank you to all of Erwin's daughters for their contribution. We really appreciate you sharing with that, us, with that with us today. That has brought to the end the tribute element of this service. We're going to now have a reflection video. This has been put together by Charlotte Bennett, granddaughter, and it's entitled The Life and Times of Hermin. Immediately after this, we will be listening to the eulogy, a journey of Hermin's life, and Hermin's life rather, and that will be read by Melody Brown Niece in that order.
pleasant good afternoon to the ministers, leaders, and members of this house, to members of my family and friends of Herman Gale. Thank you for showing up for our family today. I am Melody Brown, her niece, actually her favorite niece. Okay, I will not get any comment from here, but I'm sure online I am being disputed right now. It is absolutely an honor for me to be eulogizing my aunt this, this afternoon. A woman who I have loved from the beginning of my journey on this planet. Herman Lazedia was the sixth child of John and Doris Bryan, born in Camagüey, Cuba, on August 4th, 1936. Her name Herman means complete, which is befitting. She's completed her race here on earth. Of course, our Jamaican culture often allows for two names. One that is your legal name and one that you are known by in your community. So her other name was Muneka. As a matter of fact, if you go through our small little community in West Prospect and you say Herman, they most likely will not know who you're talking about. You would have to say Moneka. Our parents moved from Cuba in 1938 and settled in West Prospect, St. Catherine, Jamaica, where she lived until she moved to England in 1964. West Prospect is a rural farming community so she would have been surrounded by fields on every property and the remnant of sugarcane plantations, actual sugarcane plantations from colonization era. She would also be surrounded by rivers and people in a community who were all related. The Bryans in 1938 were actually the outsider who eventually planted strong roots that will remain for generations to come. Life for her family was very simple. They were one of the few families who were fluent in both English and Spanish. Auntie Ermin would have been one of the first of their children to speak English. As a matter of fact, when the family moved to Jamaica, her older siblings were homeschooled for the first year of them living in that community because of the language barrier. Their mother, Doris, would have been their first teacher. Most likely, she attended the basic school in her community as a first step towards formal education via the West Prospect New Testament Church of God, as Miss Amy Thomas would have been her first teacher from age four to six. Though her mother was of Baptist faith, Herman and her siblings embraced the New Testament Church of God and attended church regularly. Auntie was a faithful person. She was faithful to God and family. Proverbs 31, 10. Who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies. Notice that this verse begins with a question. Who can find a virtuous woman? The implication is that a woman like the one we that is described in these verses is not necessarily easy to find, but they are out there. Today, we are honoring one. The word virtuous means might, valor, or ability. The term was often used to denote strong men going into battle. A virtuous woman is capable of completing the task in front of her. In the time when Proverbs was written, rubies were extremely, extremely valuable. They would be co in comparison to diamond and gold in today's price. So, so this verse is telling us that the right kind of woman, like my Auntie Herman, is priceless. The heart of her husband would safely trust in her so that he shall have no need for spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She committed herself to her husband 
and her children for over 60 years. Her world centered around her beloved Claudius, Uncle Claudi. And she demonstrated her commitment and faithfulness by her willingness to move from one continent to another just to be with him. Married for 58 years, their love was a visible. I have had the pleasure of watching them. Uncle Claudi anticipates every move Auntie was going to make, and he was right there to support her. I am sure that, the most, that most of you here today would agree that you would never see one without the other. I had the privilege of hosting them in my home back in 2017, and they sat together in the same spot every single night for the entire trip and watched TV. It was a small corner couch that I had, and I don't even know how they fit on that because it's for one person, but that's where they sat every night. It was such a pleasure watching them and watching their love and understanding what love between a wife and husband is supposed to be. In their home, I understand that uncle would occasionally joke with her by saying, all right, Herm, my little ice cube. And I understand that's his little way of saying because she's always cold. And, would often remind her, and he would often remind her that she was not a true Jamaican since she was born in Cuba. She would kiss her teeth and uncle would give her a little squeeze. Without words, he was telling her that he had her back, even if he was teasing her. He truly had her back through good times, bad times, losses and gains. It is a death only that have separated them. And also in Cuba, they were not considered Cubans. They were considered the nationality of their parents. So they were actually in Jama um, Cuba, uh, Jamaican in Cuba, even though that's where they were born. Uncle Claudi, I know that this is the hardest part of this love story that you will ever endure, but rest assured that joy comes and joy will come. Remember this, because Ruth followed her heart and went with Naomi to Bethlehem, our influence on others increased. So it was with Auntie Herman. She it was able to live a full and nurturing life because she followed her heart. She was able to build community among her church brethren, participated fully in her church as a member of the sanctuary choir and in the nursery and became friends with neighbors. Sister E. Johnson recall. I met Sister Gail in 1960 when we first attended George Street. Since that time until now, we have remained friends. For the length of time I have known Sister Gail, she has remained the same quiet, gentle, caring person who I have shared fellowship with. Our relationship was such that our families visited each other and take, took time out to pray and even her sister and family became part of this friendship as brethren in the church. I'm assuming that was Auntie Juanita. Mm -hmm. Auntie Herman was a silent warrior. She believed in prayer and studying the word of God. She was totally dependent on God and was faithful in his service. Isaiah 43, 31. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Yes, she waited patiently, trusting and believing that this life and its pleasures, hills to climb, valleys to navigate, were just a passage to the end game. Her new and permanent beginning is at hand. While here she loved and was loved. Her friend Hyvie Harris recalled how they met and built solid friendship. My first meeting with Herman was when I moved to Winnicott Grove over 50 years ago. This is how it happened. 
my daughter Beulah went into the gully and she ran back to me and said, Mom, I saw two black girls in the garden. She was so excited to see the girls that she went to talk to them through the fence. Soon after this, Hermine and I met up. We became friends. Hermine told me that when she saw me first from her bedroom window, I was spinning washing on the line. She said, a witch white woman that over there. We did have a big laugh about it. I remember Herman's sense of humor on another occasion. And Auntie was very, very undercover, humorous, and extremely, extremely funny. If you have long conversation with her, bits of that would come out. We'd used to walk to HP, work at HP Sauce in Haston on the evening shift and would walk home together. On our way home one night, we reached by the university and there was a social function taking place with dancing. Herman looked in on the scene and said to me, them a drop foot. The memory of the dancers dropping foot kept us both laughing and giggling all the way home. No one else looking on knew what we were laughing about. But the memory of it stays with me until this day. Miss Ivy, I pray that her memory will continue to be a blessing to you. As children, we are very conscious of the fact that our parents will go one day. As we see them age and see ourselves aging as well, we know the hands of death is near. We don't know the order, but we know that it is looming. We often hear the children of deceased persons saying, this is the hardest thing ever. It really is. But to Uncle Claudie, my cousins Angela, Claude, Marcia, know that this is not the end for your wife and mother. God's plan for his children far exceeds what this life offers. As believers, we know death take our physical body, but the soul of man will never die. So in those moments when you feel this loss, relish in the memories you have made with your wife and mother. Napoleon once said, let France have great mothers and France will have great sons. You had a great mother and you will have great children and raise great children because she taught you how. Hermine's children will forever be blessed. Claude, remember how she would phone her mom and she would say, got any gossip? I can almost hear her saying that. And how they would talk for hours about life. Claude's made the memory of her cute little laugh continue to bring you joy, hold her dear to you. And all the things that she's taught you, remember that your creativity that was inspired by her, hold on to the fact that you are a skilled dressmaker because she was your first teacher. Mothers were looked upon with great respect, reverence in the East. Proverbs 1, 8. My son, hear the instruction of the father, thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. Marcia, your core memory will remain sweet. You also have a responsibility now to share with your children and grandchildren how as a child your mom would allow you to assist with the baking and how you were the official cake taster and how you often wonder why as a devout Christian you, you, would, you didn't think that your mom would soak her fruit in alcohol. I just want to let you know that the alcohol dip disappears through the break baking process. So there was none, just the flavor. Let generations come know how proud of her you were when she designed and made your lavish wedding cake, which was embellished with intricate ice decoration and how your guests inquired about the baker and how elated you were to inform them that it was your mother. Maybe one day, you will inspire her grandchildren to continue their legacy. 
1 Kings 2, 19, when Bathsheba went to King Solomon to speak to him for Adajani, Adanje, the king stood up to meet her, bowed down to her, and sat down on his throne. He had a throne brought for the king's mother, and she sat down at his right hand. Mothers are special. Women whose steps were ordered by God, who walk in purpose, commands respect. And that was Ermin Brian Gale. Angela, your word speaks of a virtuous woman, a woman of God who took her duty seriously, who did what was necessary to make her children happy while ensuring that they understood the value of self, one who demonstrated that self-respect by the way she lived, you were, are now able to immolate her. Angela stated in her notes to me, both our parents were strict in our upbringing. We were only allowed to go to school and church, to play outside with our friends, and visit aunts and uncles. It sounded just like our house as well. Our parents were instrumental in the kind of people we have turned out to be, as they ensure that we were brought up to respect others, but most importantly, to respect ourselves. Although we all grow, mom would still care enough to pray daily that we are safe and healthy. She was indeed a woman of great worth. Abraham Lincoln said, all that I am and hope to be, I hold to my angel mother. We can see Ermin reflected in her daughters and now her grandchildren. Auntie was a godmother. She added joy and value to the lives of her godchildren. Her goddaughter, Letisa, said, my godmother, Hermine, was a wonderful godmother to me. She was such a humble soul and always had a lovely smile. I always thought she was so cute due to her small stature and always put together so smartly with her handbags and hats. She was the only godparent that faithfully remembered my birthday from a baby up until now as an adult. She took notice of my growing, my growing up as I noticed her gifting over the years became more mature. And with my first growing up perfume when I was 16, it was Elizabeth Arden, Red Door. I didn't know it at that time but I came to realize it was an actual classic. The fragrance is imprinted in my brain, and every time it's sprayed, I always think of her. It is also imprinted in the brains of every niece she has in Canada, and every niece she has in Jamaica. And it even went on to the next generation, because when she visited us in <laughs> 2017, on her dresser was a bottle of Red Door, and I picked it up and I said, oh, thank you, Auntie. And she said, it's for Shauna. So my daughter had a chance to receive one from her as well. My most dear memory, I'll continue with her goddaughter's tribute, however, is having the opportunity to briefly nurse her on one of her occasions she was in the hospital. She was an, on another ward, but I wanted to make sure she was made comfortable for the night and for her to see a familiar face. So I went there after my shift was over to do so. It felt as if I was now able to give something back from all the love and care she gave to me growing up. Although it was only a short time, I remember sitting by her as she fell asleep. This was divine favor. Her blessing returned to her when she needed the most. Theodore Roosevelt said, the mother is the one supreme asset of a nation's life. She's more important by far than the successful statesman, or businessman, artist, or scientist. Auntie was brilliant, 
though quiet in speech, an avid reader who made notes, lots of notes while reading. I remember my first time visiting the UK and I stayed with her and the room that I was in, there were piles of notebooks and tapes and, she, and I'm like, what are all these? And she said, she writes. I'm also a writer, so I can see where I got that from. Marcia shared that Billy Graham being amongst one of her favorite authors and that there was not a day that went by without her writing volumes of notes, taking reference from the Everyday with Jesus booklets as well as various publications. I'm wrapping up soon. We cannot share our memories of her journey without talking about her love for flowers. You heard a little bit about that. Her niece Heather reminded me that throughout our years that we lived in Jamaica, we would hear our grandmother saying that the garden at the front of the house belonged to Maneka. The garden remained well into the 2000 when the last person left our ancestral home. For those who visited her home in, in the UK here, you would have seen that love for flowers remained with her. Marcy said mom loved flowers and gardening and could name every single plant in her extensive garden, even the weeds when they dared to raise their heads. She loved nothing more than sitting in the garden and enjoying the splendor of her wares, the beautiful colors on all the aromas of the blossom. Her son-in-law, Winston, fondly remember when he would help her with the garden. He was impressed at how well she knew her plants and that she would often comment that Claudie doesn't really know anything about plants and mistakenly pulled them up, believing they are weed. So she made sure that she would stand when uncle was pulling out weeds so she could give him directions. Angela, Claude's, and Marcia. Proverbs 620, my son, keep your father's command and do not forsake your mother's teaching. It is my hope that you will each hold fast to what you know is true. Your mother was faithful in the master's service. She served her family, community, her church with dignity and grace. Her legacy is now in your hands. Her legacy is now in your hands. You each have a responsibility to ensure that the next generation understand the value of family and above all, faith in God. This morning or this afternoon, I encourage each of you to remind, to remain the foundation and to keep the foundation that was built deep-rooted into the grace of God and understand that total submission to God's will is the only way to live. The mantle is now passed to each of you. Elaine Sherwood, I can assure, I know I didn't say your name, forgive me. I can assure you that you are indeed a family to her, so do not discount Count yourself blessed to have had the opportunity to see her as a bonus mother. Auntie and uncle did set the bar for what one should aspire in their marriage. They were indeed soulmates who loved unconditionally. Sister Harrison, she will continue to sing praises to God, and we pray you do the same. Denise Moret, we are delighted that she took you under her wings. She was truly an inspiration to many. I actually heard about you doing her hair and her memory, as her memory faded, you were one of the only people that she remembered. And I thank God that you were able to serve her well. I've had my aunt all my life. She was present at my birth and apparently there was a drought back in February 1st, 1963. So when I arrived into this world, they had no water to give me my first bath. 
auntie walked 45 minutes to the home of the woman who eventually became my godmother so that I would have my first bath. I heard that all my life. I remember her making us dresses for myself and Heather. I remember how beautiful she was. I was in awe and fell so deeply in love with her when she came to Jamaica when I was seven. I share her love for writing, as I told you, a gift that I hold so much closer to my heart in this moment. I can confidently say, thy purpose, O oh Lord, we cannot see, but all is well that's done by thee. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for gifting us Herman. You found us worthy to have her walk among us for 86 years. We are eternally grateful for your wisdom, love for us to have gifted us her. My dearest auntie, I will miss the unexpected WhatsApp Sunday calls, my birthday and Christmas cards. I will miss your present among us, but today I can sincerely rejoice knowing that you were and that I was blessed to be loved by you. May our hearts be at peace because we know without a shadow of doubt that she will walk among the saints because she, was, she has been faithful in the master's service. Sir Ermin, Auntie Muneka, until then, sleep in peace. God bless you. Thank you, Melody Brown, for sharing the eulogy with us. Due to the time, unfortunately, I will not be able to call Reverend James to share a word. She will share something with the family, she said, at the grave, as she will be overseeing that element of the service. Can I now invite the congregation to be upstanding and um, invite at this time Doc, Bishop Dr. Leon Hales to offer his final commendation. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> yes, it is a good thing to give thanks and praise unto the Lord. <coughs> On the behalf of my wife and I and the family, I extend our sincere condolences to the Gales family. Beautiful, smiling, lovely person. And at this time, I'm going to pray. You know, Jesus, when he was about to depart and go back to heaven, the disciples were very sad. And he said to them, I will not leave you comfortless. I will not leave you as orphans. But I will come to you. I will send you another comforter another of the God kind who will be with you forever. So I want to say to the family, Amen. Be of good cheer. Be of good comfort. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. We are on the threshold of the return of Jesus Christ. This time is a time when the hearts are broken. It is a time when you are sad. It's a time when they are hoping 
and empty places within the family. But God will be with you. He said, you believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many mansions. And I go to prepare a place for you. Sister Gail is in a better place. Could you bow your heads with me at this time? Eternal God, our heavenly Father, the maker, the creator of heaven and earth, one from whom we receive comfort and assurance. Thank you for the life of Sister Gail. Thank you for her service, Lord. Thank you for her examples. We give you thanks and we give you praise. Lord, at this time, I present the family before you in a very special way. We're all in need of your touch, Lord. But the family who is grieving at this time, they are in need of a special touch. I ask you, Lord, that you will throw your arms around them and comfort them in those lonely hours. Comfort them, Lord, and give them assurance that you who lived and died and rose again from the dead, that you're coming back for your people. Bless them, Lord, today. Bless the congregation, each and every one of us, as we look forward in expectation that one day we're going to be with you in glory. Thank you, Lord. Another soul have landed, and there's room for many more. Those who are not saved in the family, I ask of you, Lord, that you will touch them. You will lift them up, and you will save them by your divine power. Father, I want to thank you and praise you for today. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you all. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. As the um, funeral directors take up their position and the bearers prepare themselves, can I thank everyone for the wonderful way you have contributed to the success of today? and thank those who are online for staying with us. We really appreciate your time that you've spent with the family and with us today. And last but not least, for the front of house, the stewards and others who always come and make these services that much easier with the direction and the guidance they give us, we want to say thanks to all those who have volunteered your time to make sure that we are safe in this church. God bless you. And I will now pronounce the blessings. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And may the Lord give you peace. Amen. We will now be taking our final journey to lay our precious sister to rest at Hansa Cemetery. If the bearers can now take their... Okay. Um, please be seated. Please be seated.
the musicians, uh, the keyboard player will play. If you wish to view, it's on these terms that you do not stop, greet the family, touch the body, take any photographs, okay? File pass straight back to your seats. There are family members who have come from abroad who would like at least to say their final goodbyes and we want to honor that. So in order for us to do that, everybody has to work with us today. So the ushers, you know the protocols. I'm asking you just to take up your positions and we'll start from this side in the center and family members, you remain where you are. If you do not wish to view, it is not considered in any way an insult. It's a personal choice. So we're going to offer the opportunity to those who wish to exercise that personal choice. View, return to your seats as you're guided by the ushers. And the family, remain where you are. We will call you towards the end. Okay? I'll start on my left, your right. View and straight back to your seats. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, my sister. they are viewing for those who would like to join the family after the committal the family have invited us to gather with them at the H suite it's on the inside back cover of the program 100 Little Port Road in Edgebaston B16 0AA Please keep moving, please keep moving, thank you. Sorry. for working with us today. If everybody who wishes to view except for the family have viewed, then I will move to the family. Is there anyone who's not a family member who has changed your mind and you'd like to view? I'll pause for you right now. Can I then now invite the family members? Can her husband and daughters and siblings remain in their, uh, siblings remain in their seats? Any other family member, you don't have to walk around. Just step forward, spend a few moments with her, then go back to your seat and I'll call the rest after. Either side right or left you can just gather around you don't need to file pass
I'll extend the opportunity to the platform if you wish to view at this time. Feel free to do so. Can I now invite her immediate family, her husband, her children, grandchildren, if they're her siblings, just come, just come around. And you know what, family members, those of you who have already viewed, I want you just to come and just support them, all right? Feel free just to stand around them. You've got about two to three minutes to be able to just be there for them and to say your final goodbyes. The coffin will be leaving the church to the song Goodness of God by C.C. Winans. For your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hand 
from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Cause all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God.
friends You all know how it is They got your back And they just won't fall away But this is something I've got to do for myself I'm thankful but I can't take the help Gotta do this my way, my way, my way To be a better man Late again, but I know the change. Never know for me.
Heavenly Father, as we're about to lay the remains of our sister to rest in this place, 
We thank you for her life. We thank you for her commitment. We thank you for the profession of her faith. We thank you that she lived an honorable life, an exemplary life. And so we ask your blessings today on this particular spot. And we know and we're assured that on that final day, when you take the saints away, she will be amongst the number. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. And let us say amen. 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 Could you please lower? During the act of communion, I'm going to ask the family to part with us. So the family is here. And I know you've got very long. I'd like you to part with the I'm not going to see her again. You will. Because your faith is in the Lord Jesus Christ. You will see her. Amen, 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 amen. twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, grave, where is your victory? The sting of, sin, of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be you steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain. Sister Gail's labor is not in vain. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Family members, you can participate in the act of committal. <laughs> Thank you. 
going to do the traditional backfilling but as LaShawn had um, explained we will now wait for the attendants to help us to do this in a very safe way so they're going to bring some dig bring the digger over and bring the soil over but we can in the meantime, we can sing. If you've got one of these, we can sing until they <coughs> return. The first one is, Shall We Gather at the River? And I'm not going to do solo today, because I know there are people here who know this song. Mm -hmm. Amen. Shall we? Gather at the river where rise and just meet up draw with his crystal tide forever flowing from the throne of God. Yes, we will gather at the river all oh, the beautiful, beautiful river. Gather Shining river, soon our pilgrimage will cease. Soon our happy hearts will quiver with the melody of peace. Yes, we will gather at the river. Oh, the beautiful. Gather with the 
I'm going to tell all the people good morning. I'm going to sit down beside my Jesus. I'm going to sit down and rest all the while. We'll soon be done. We'll soon be done. We trouble and try on the other side, I'm going to shake the hands with the elders, I'm going to tell all the people good morning, I'm going to sit down beside my Jesus, I'm going to sit down and rest all the while, we'll soon be done, with troubles and trials, when I get home, on the other side, I'm going to shake my hands with the elders, I'm going to tell all the people good morning, I'm going to sit down beside my Jesus, I'm going to sit down and rest all the while, we'll soon be done. With troubles and trials, when I get home on the other side, I'm going to shake my hands with the elders, I'm going to tell all the people good morning, I'm going to sit down beside my Jesus, I'm going to sit down and rest in the world. We'll soon be done, we'll soon be done with troubles and trials. When I go home on the other side, I'm going to shake my hands with the elders. I'm going to tell all the people good morning. I'm going to sit down beside my Jesus. I'm going to sit down and rest all the while. Morning. When, when this life, life is over, I will fly away to a home on a celestial shore. I fly away, fly away. Have a grand time, have a grand time, have a grand time. 
The words and the reefs first, and we're going to bring them up and start to dress Mr. Gale's eternal resting place. So, if you want to give a hand, please grab a set of flowers. Perfect. 
Thank you. Eternal God, our Father, we give praise, we give worship, we give honor to you. You are our everlasting God and our Father, the God who gives and the God who takes. You are our life, and in you we live, we move, we have our being. We come at this time, Lord, to give thanks for your goodness and your mercy and your grace that keeps us. And we can declare like David the Psalmist who said that yet though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil. Why? Because you are with us uh, to comfort us. And as we lay our dear sister, uh, this our earthly rest in place. Father, we thank you for the life that you allowed her to share with us. We thank you for the legacy that she has left. And we pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that you would stand by the family to undergird them, to scaffold them around with your divine love and grace. We pray that this spot will be a happy spot of memories 
to recall the life of a loved one lived amongst us. So we pray in the name of Jesus that you would just stand by the family as they go forward to be their guide, to be their comfort, because you are the God of all comfort. We pray that you would enter into their brokenness at this time and be the light that shines in darkness, that light of hope that says if only in this life we had hope, we would be of all most miserable. But thank you for that blessed assurance that Jesus is ours. And one day we shall be with our sister to rejoice and sing the happy, wondrous song, How We Got Over. We thank you now, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Over to you, Lashaw. Mm -hmm. <coughs> could I find it Six family members. Mm -hmm. that was, that was about, could I have a little space at the council where I'm going to the blood here? What I'm going to do is get the blood to be released for about a year to save this place. Mm -hmm. So if you would like to see the blood head on, I would say just move over to that side. And then just the six immediate family members mm -hmm. that would like to hold. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This? You talking about this? Yes. <laughs> 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 So, thank you everybody. <laughs> so what's going to happen is, Amy's going to read us out a short poem. Then once the poem has been read, if we can all as a congregation have a count from one to three, then family, once again, when we get to three, we're going to give you all a big round of applause and then you're going to duck your, knee, your knees, sorry, and we're all going to shout release with a big round of applause once again, all right? Thank you. Thank you, Amy. I'm sending a dove to heaven 
with a parcel on its wings. Be careful when you open it, it's full of beautiful things. Inside are a million kisses, wrapped up in a million hugs, to say how much we miss you and to send you all our love. We will hold you close within our hearts and there you will remain to walk with us throughout our lives until we meet again. If everybody wouldn't mind counting with me now, please, all right? One, two, three, and then release. Thank you. And if you could have a big round of applause, please, as a mark of respect for this skill. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Sister Herman, until we meet again. Amen. Thank you, everybody. As you can um, see by our times, we have just gone to four o'clock, meaning we are slightly over our allocated time stop, but that is absolutely fine as we've all had a beautiful day. Now, I just need to let you all know before we leave, family that are in the um, limousines over there, there is a tap just there um, on my right, line, directly in front of me. Without being rude to you all, if I could just get you guys to just give you a quick wash off for me, just so we don't rip the lever or anything in the cars, that would be perfect. Everybody else as well, there is a tap there for you if you would like to wash your feet. We're going back into your vehicles. I'm going to say now, I do have to usher us to leave without being rude. It's not me rushing, but. I have officially gone over my allocated time start now at the cemetery, all right? So without being rude to you all, all right? But thank you, everybody. Thank you. Stand behind the chair. What, over here? Yeah. Ah. Good fun.
Some things leave you guessing. MailChimp eliminates the guesswork from email marketing by suggesting ways to improve your email copy, imagery, and layout. Guess less and sell more with Intuit MailChimp.